The next 11 projects involve the seven segment display, which is a device that has seven LEDs that illuminate in various combinations to display different numbers or letters. Although most generally have seven, this particular one actually has eight LEDs because there is a decimal here that can illuminate too. And you can apply power to the different LEDs by connecting two snap wires to the, any of these points. Right now, the two left LEDs and the bottom one are connected so that when you apply power, the capital letter L appears. And now for the first number, number one, I'm going to insert another four snap wire to the right of the display connected to the circuit with a two snap wire. And then I will place two snap wires between points B and C. Now you have the number one. For number two, I am going to connect points A, B, G, E, and D. Now you have the number two. For number three, I am simply going to remove the two snap wire from point E and connect it to point C. For number four, I am going to remove this connection here and as well as this one and make a connection with point F. For number five, I am going to do the following connections. Number six is quite easy. Just make a connection to E. For number seven, remove all these connections. And then you have the number seven. Now for number eight, you're going to connect all these points to the battery. For number nine, remove the connection on point E. And finally for zero, reinsert connection E and remove connection G. And there you have the numbers of the seven segment display. Seven segment displays are very useful in digital clocks, thermometers, and other measuring devices because they're solid state components and they take up very little space. Not all seven segment displays use LEDs. Some use LCDs and some even use a, photo, a special substance that glows when electricity is passed through it, like a photoluminescent substance. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and the voltage meter deflects to the right. I'm going to slowly move the lever on the adjustable resistor upward and the meter deflects closer to 10. And now it goes back to zero as music from the integrated circuit here stops. And the component right here is the transformer, which increases or decreases voltage. Now, to reset the circuit, you have to remove and reinsert one of the batteries. But I can insert the speaker between these two points. I'd have to use a two-snap wire. And then I can hear the music that is playing. Here you have another project involving the relay. And when I put all the batteries in and the slide switch is off, the green LED is on. But when I turn the slide switch on, listen and watch carefully. The relay clicks and the green LED turns off, but the red LED comes on. When I turn the slide switch off, 
the red LED turns off and the green LED comes back on. A relay is an electronic switch with contacts that use a magnetic field to change when an electric current is passed through. And when the slide switch is on, the first contact on the relay will switch to contact three, lighting the red LED. Then when I turn off the slide switch, contact two is closed, enabling current to flow through the green LED. This could be like a mini traffic light. You could use the slide switch to change the lights from red to green. Green means go and red means stop. Then green means go again. When I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. Then I'm going to push the press switch and the lamp will stay on for a short period of time before it goes out. Now they say it will stay on for seven seconds and the name of this project is manual seven second timer but it seems to stay on a little bit longer than that. But turning on this pushing the press switch charges the capacitor and releasing it discharges it. The energy from the capacitor flows through the lamp. This may remind you of like maybe a light in a garage door opener that will come on for a little bit when you either activate the door or walk through the doorway and then it will turn off after a short period of time to save energy. This is the half wave rectifier circuit. A rectifier converts an AC voltage into a DC voltage. AC stands for alternating current and DC stands for direct current. In this project, a diode, which will now be the LED, is used since it allows current to flow in just one direction. When I turn on the slide switch, the contacts of the relay will open and close rapidly, generating AC current. But the transformer will convert that current into voltage. It contains a rectifier. And look how far the voltage meter deflects. The red LED also lights. Alternating current is flowing from the meter, I mean the relay, to the transformer, and then DC current is flowing from the transformer to the LED, resistor, and meter. Now for the subsequent project, I'm going to move the meter to this position, and the needle deflects west. Only about eight seven or two, eight milliamps. Final, then for the next project, I'm going to remove the LED and replace it with the basic diode. Now look how far the meter deflects past 10 milliamps because the basic diode has a lower voltage drop than that of the red LED. Finally, I am going to change the R2 resistor and replace it with the R3 one. Look how much the current has decreased. When resistance is increased, current obviously decreases. And there you have it. This is a telegraph. When you push and hold down the press switch, you hear a low-pitched buzzing sound coming from the speaker. And you can hold the button down for short and long periods to send messages. Different combinations of short and long tones represent the different letters and numbers. Watch Project 228 Morse Code Generator for more information 
about what the different combinations represent and more information about the telegraph. After removing the speaker and inserting the whistle chip between points D and C, I'm going to push the press switch and you hear a mosquito sound. There are three variants to this project, and for the first, I'm going to move the whistle chip between points B and E. You can probably notice that the sound is different. To change the sound again, I'm going to insert the whistle chip below the C2 capacitor. It's even quieter. Finally, I'm going to replace the R5 resistor with the photo resistor and then as the I hold the press switch down, the sound is higher pitch with light shining on the photoresistor, but I can change the noise by waving my hand over the sensor. And there you have it. This circuit gives an idea of how computers use memory circuits to remember states such as on and off. When I push the press switch and the slide switch is off, the bulb stays off. But when I turn on the slide switch, then push and release the press switch, the lamp comes on and the S3 relay will remember that it is on. And it will stay on until I turn off the slide switch. This is a relay buzzer. When I turn on the slide switch, the relay makes a loud buzzing noise because the contacts are opening and closing at a very fast rate. And some alarms, alarms, especially older ones, use relays because they're relatively simple instead of electronic speakers. This is a transistor timer. This project is similar to Project 342, the manual seven second timer, but it now uses the PMP and MPN transistors. When I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. Pushing the press switch will light the lamp and the transistors will stay on for about one minute after pushing the press switch. Then the transistors will turn off and therefore the lamp, once the C3 capacitor completely runs out. And the relay is used to turn the lamp on and off. This might make you think about like maybe a light on, once again, a light on a garage door opener that comes on for a short while or a light in your car that opens when you, that comes on when you open the door, but then it turns off after you shut the door ab about like a minute later. And there you have it. When there is light on the photoresistor, the relay turns the lamp on. But when I cover the photoresistor and light can't reach it anymore, the relay turns the lamp off. For the variant, I replaced the photoresistor with the R4 resistor and connected a jumper wire between these two points. Right now, the lamp is off, but when I remove one of the ends of the jumper wire, the lamp comes on. It will go out again when I reinsert it. Again, the relay is controlling the 
transistor, and bulb. When there is enough light on the photoresistor and the lever on the RV is below the middle line, the lamp will come on when there is sufficient light shining on the photoresistor. And note that the lamp will not shine if the lever is above the middle line. The RV is upside down, just to let you know, so you don't get confused. But when it's at its lowest setting, the photoresistor is the most sensitive to light. And it's easier to turn the lamp on. When I push the press switch, the red LED quickly flashes, the meter deflects slightly to the right, and the lamp comes on. When I release the press switch, the green LED briefly lights. Pushing the press switch generates one current, which flows through the left side of the transformer and through the red LED. But then releasing the press switch will generate another current that flows around through the green LED, allowing it to briefly light but the meter records both currents. The current from pushing the press switch is a lot bit greater than the one from releasing it. This project has a similar principle to number 343 in that it shows an alternating current being converted to a direct current. Pushing and releasing the press switch continuously as what I am doing produces an AC current, and then the LED converts it to a DC current since electricity can only flow through it in one direction, and the meter will only deflect to the right. Without the LED, the meter will deflect in both directions. In real life applications, inverters are often used to convert one type of current to another, especially AC to DC power. This circuit enables you to measure current instead of voltage. When I turn on the slide switch, the motor spins and you can see how much current is flowing by looking at the meter. It's close to three milliamps right now. And the current on the right side of the transformer creates a current on the left side using magnetism. This circuit enables the speaker to produce sound when the relay buzzes. The buzzing of the relay generates the opening and closing of the relay's contacts generate an AC voltage, which is in turn converted to a DC voltage by the transformer, and then sound can be heard on the speaker. But it can be hard to distinguish it from that generated by the relay itself. If you want to make the sound a little bit louder, you can just replace the C2 capacitor with a three snap wire. And you probably notice a slight change in sound. 